this is the thing for us what kind of band we were we weren't we never thought we would ever break big on the radio or anything like that and so when we actually blew we were on the end of our first record cycle which is weird like like our that record went gold at the end of its cycle so it was just it was it was wild and then everything just got amplified It's time to make your passion your paycheck. Welcome to another episode of the Colin with Colin show. And before we start, I want to ask you the million dollar question. And I want you to be 100% honest with yourself. If you were to have a billion dollars sent to your bank account right now, you no longer had to work, what would you do next? And I want you to really go deep into this question. Most people will say something very surface level like I'll travel the world, or I'll buy my dream home, which is amazing. But after maybe a year or two, it's gonna get boring. So what happens after that? And that's really the question. Comment your response below. We'd love to know your thoughts. I want you to really go deep into this. Today's guest is calling in from Valencia, California. John Otto, drummer and co-founder of the popular band Limp Biscuit. We'll start off as a small band from Jacksonville, Florida. Limp Biscuit be quickly became one of the most popular new metal bands in the world selling over 45 million records worldwide. John Otto is someone who found a way to not only live out his dream, but has found a way to make impact year after year and is still giving back to his community. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome John Otto to the show. Thank you. Say what's up. Colin, thanks for having me. And uh, I have a question for you, sir. All right. Love it, man. Dude, honored to be on the uh, the show with you. I was telling you off-platform uh, like my, my dad was a drummer for years, so it's, it's really, really neat. I wish he was here. He's down in Florida. I retired him, uh, but he's, uh, he's nice. Gone. Yeah. So they love to hear your question, but I just wanted to acknowledge and say thank you for being on the show and uh, excited for this episode. Um, did you ever pick up a musical instrument when you were growing up? And did you learn a little? Did you have I know you have some rhythm in your blood, man. Did you ever get behind the uh the kit and hit the twos and fours or what? <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, I never did, you know, my, my, so I guess nothing to the capacity of what you've been able to do, but, um, my dad actually bought me like, uh, one of those practice drum sets that don't make a ton of noise like the, um, and he said that I picked up on it too quick and he was concerned that I was going to go down a similar path to him, um, which he did professional drumming for like 20 years. And so, I, to answer your question, no, I didn't pick up any instruments. Um, I was more into sports, uh, played uh, football and basketball, and then joined the Army at 17 and did uh, three tours, Egypt, Iraq, Afghanistan. Um, so not necessarily like the instrumental side, but I love the creativity. I'm more of a, uh, I love to draw uh, more on like caricatures um, and, and, business is is really fun for me and fitness was also really really big and it's it's been an important part in my life so yeah, i'm curious like when did you start picking up like obviously you know uh with your professional background playing with limp biscuit like what did that look like getting started and like your uh early stages when did you start picking up um an instrument were you like one of those guys you see in diapers freaking you know just going to town or what does that look like? You know what I mean? Like I've seen those come out the womb, like beating on my mom. No, so, uh, um, no I, uh, you know, I, I was a pretty hyper kid growing up. And I remember my grandmother and my mother, you know, when I used to visit my, my uh, grandparents, I have one set that lived in South Carolina and uh, the, my grandmother had a piano and I would doodle around on the piano. So, when I was around seven, seven or eight, the uh, my mom had kind of, well, I was going to say she got me piano lessons, but she forced me to play piano. It was more really like what it was like. And I really didn't like it because, you know, I was a, into sports and I was, you know, similar situation. But I did it anyway, and um, I just kind of stuck to it. And uh, And then by the time I was 12, uh, 
I was getting into drums and all kinds of other stuff. So, uh, so like in rock music and jazz and hip hop was starting to expand then back in my day. And uh, so then I was beating on pillows and cutting lawns so I could save up enough money to buy some drums, you know? And uh, that's, then I got my first, like, I remember I cut lawns all summer and got my uh, first CB 700 drum kit, I think it was. And uh, then it started practicing, drove my dad nuts because he's retired from military. He was a career uh, Navy man, but, uh, and he was a, a master mechanic. He, he's passed on now, but he, uh, he was he was cool, man. They they let me bang, you know, set me a little schedule, and I, I, you know, never looked back after that. I guess. And then for high school, a new pro, a new magnet school for arts had opened up, and uh, called Douglas Anderson School of the Arts in Jacksonville, Florida, where I grew up. And uh, I uh, went there, and it was an audition type thing, and got accepted into there and it's funny because they make you take piano if you're a musician there no matter what and i didn't have to take the piano class because i had already taken piano which was awesome kind of worked out and then we started my, my band in our senior year and Wes went to school there too so he went there for art that's how, how we met we had been playing in local bands since we were kids you know anyway so i know we had known each other for a long time and uh, we formed our band, and uh, Fred and, and Sam and I and Wes, and then the rest is literally history. So. Yeah. What was it always Limp Biscuit, or did you have a first name before that that wasn't as known? Like, no, we were we tried. Uh, <laughs> we went through the whole we got to come up with a name thing, you know, yeah. as a band, and we. Busted out the sources and dictionaries and tried to think of cool stuff and it was just too forced, you know. And we're and everything sounded too like metal, you know what I mean? Like and too uh, too serious. And then I remember one we had our band room. And I think it was uh, one of our one of the guys who used to work with us. Um, and this guy smoked a ton of ton of weed just constantly and um we were saying he was saying something and then he he was trying to come up with names and then and and then somebody was like dude your brain is like a limp biscuit and then <laughs> into that effect and then everybody was like wait a minute that is dumb but sounds awesome somehow you know and so we just were like whatever and so you know we, we, we stuck with it but it, it you know we tried the regular we tried the regular spelling but something just didn't sit you know with the regular way to spell biscuit so then we switched it up with the z you know we, there was a few changes but you know yeah what was what was like uh what was like a traditional what was your favorite tour like maybe there was a specific city do you remember like a specific um like going back reminiscing this this specific one was like the best of the best what would that be what would do you have one that's kind of like touring around colin to tell you the truth man it's i i've had a lot of i was blessed with a lot of great touring i mean this is the thing for us what kind of band we were we weren't we never thought we would ever break big on the radio or anything like that we were like okay we're, you know, we're friends with Corn, or, you know, and they're a touring band and we're like, okay, so we're cool with that. You know, we're just going to grind and, and touring is our deal. And so when we actually blew, we were on the end of our first record cycle, which is weird. Like, like our, that record went gold at the end of its cycle. It's supposed to, normally it's supposed to go in the beginning of a cycle, you know what I mean? So, so it was just, it was, it was wild. And then everything just got amplified so i don't know we've had a lot of great we have great fans you know we're really lucky that our live shows have been good we've always kind of prided ourselves on be, being a live band but uh 
Man, if I can think of like a couple that really have stood out, obviously the Woodstock show stood out in uh, 99. I bet y'all have some crazy ass stories. Oh man. If we were in the room, just hearing how the name got brought up, this guy was smoking weed. You're, you know, this is about as dumb as a Lint Biscuit. Like that's, yeah. that's dope. Like, you know, like. I mean, I'm sure there's a little details that are a little fuzzy about it, but that's pretty much what happened. Yeah, um, yeah I have. I'm mean, tons of stories, dude. And most of them, which I probably can't really go into too much detail about right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. So I'm curious, um, on like, what is your what's your passion now? What's your focus? If it's like you know, in this chapter of your life, what does that look like for you? Where do you see yourself in the next? I don't know, five years, ten years, and is there any like big goals, dreams that you have? uh currently going on oh uh, yeah um my 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 goals now you know covid was pretty rough and uh for for me it's you know and in general i, I kind of got stuck in a rut sitting around and not really motivated i gained a bunch of weight and then um i just one day i just clicked and uh got into the exercise thing you were mentioning that you're big into uh uh, exercise and, and so, so I started uh, I started working out a lot and uh, I dropped about 50 pounds since April and um, yeah and so I've been you know getting into the fitness thing and then I, I, I've always it's always been a dream of mine to uh, to give back the gift so to speak so um, you know I'm gonna I'm starting an online s drum school and um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to, you know, give lessons and, you know, help out and also do some uh, out, you know, outreach program stuff and some charity stuff. And just uh, in the next chapter of my life, you know, kind of give it back, you know, like for for the people who helped me out too, you know, give it back to some some other people and also, you know, have fun and uh, make a little money at the same time. Amen. Yeah, I, I love it, man, because I resonate very, very much aligned with that, putting people over profit. And like, um, yeah. you know, I think when you give without the expectation of a return, you can't go wrong. Exactly. I, it's the best feeling, uh, at least for me, I, what mm -hmm. I've experienced is anytime I've done charity work, it's just gratifying. You feel like, you know, you just makes you feel like a good human being. And that's, you know, who doesn't love that? <laughs> Exactly. Do you have like a uh, like a go to charity or two that you would recommend um, or that you work with hand in hand and like why you like working with them? We do make a wish okay. and um, my daughter and I also are also we're we're aligned with Jude's Hospital for cancer. Love it. And um, we're doing we're doing a couple things for them for Halloween. I think we have an event going on. That's amazing. I, we, we support St. Jude's as well. My niece uh, went through cancer. Um, she was only uh, five years old. And she, oh, man. Tough, huh? Yeah, yeah. It was really, really hard on the family. Um, both of her parents had to move to Memphis. Um, they went through that. But now she's in remission, uh, okay. thanks to God. And um, she's doing a lot better. Her hair, her hair is starting to grow out again. And it's a little player, uh, man. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, she's got more than you. Exactly. <laughs> That's not hard to do, man. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well, I do. I do have one last question for you, um, and, and it's a kind of hard one that a lot of people don't think about. But maybe you, maybe you've thought about it. Um, if you were to pass away tomorrow, what do you want to be remembered for? Um, I want to remember for being kind. For. Uh, for having high character and for, uh, you know, being a, in general, a good person who cares about people and uh, kick ass on the drum set, man. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with your friends. And every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, a new episode drops. Also, you can be on the show. If you go to invite.millionairecreator.com, you can apply, it's free, and you may have a chance 
to be on the show with me, Colin with Colin. Be sure to share this video, and if you do, we may reshare your post. Also, if you enjoy entrepreneurship just like I do, I would encourage you to go to our new website, millionairecreator.com. We have some incredible products from steel merchandise, canvas, apparel, and education courses, eBooks, and physical books. So guys, millionairecreator.com, check it out for yourself. I know you'll love it, especially for all of those entrepreneurs out there. Think of me as a recruiter, and I'm building an army of millionaires in this millionaire creator journey. I'm Colin Wayne, your instructor from Millionaire Creator and someone that has been to war, that's battle tested, bootstrapping my business to over 150,000 square feet and the fastest growing company in the state of Alabama. For the first time ever, I'm here to reveal my tactics and strategies that work in today's state, not something that worked years ago. Boot camp starts today. Stop wasting time. Click that link. Boxes, boxes. I cannot fit in the boxes. Stop it, stop it. Quitting was never an option. Exhausted, exhausted.